Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. After making love on New Year's Eve, Carly and Drew celebrated in bed with champagne in Carly's mansion. A few seconds later in the kitchen, Drew revealed that he had come back early from his trip to Australia because he was about to lose his cool with the ELQ board members. Carly said that was not like Drew at all. In the Quartermain household, Drew claimed to have taken on the job of peacemaker and insisted he was not a choir boy. Drew sulked, having traveled to Pentonville for months. Carly reported observing a shift in Drew's behavior since his release from incarceration. Drew didn't have to experience anything alone, Carly said. After exchanging kisses, Carly and Drew declared their love for one another. Carly's phone rang when Drew went to light the fireplace for him and her. What the hell? When Carly noticed the call was coming from an unfamiliar number, she said to herself. After a little while, Carly looked shocked and almost crying as she put her hand to her chest. Drew inquired as to the problem. Carly's voice sounded passionate. That was the Amsterdam embassy. Mommy is dead, Carly murmured. Dante and Sam watched pyrotechnics from their balcony at their apartment as 2024 got underway. Scout walked into Dante and Sam's bedroom as they were getting about to make love. Scout claimed to have experienced a nightmare in which a monster of a teacher had taught her at her new school. Sam reassured Scout, telling her she wasn't required to go to the new school. Scout was afraid she would offend Drew. Sam assured Dante that she wouldn't make Scout go to the private school that Drew had set up after she had put Scout to bed. Danny wanted to know how Drew would take the news. Drew would have to accept the decision, according to Sam. Sam reflected that she had raised Scout, mostly as a single parent for the majority of her childhood, and that she was accustomed to making her own parenting decisions. Sam started to wonder if she had made the right choice in telling Scout that she wasn't have to go to the private school. Dan mentioned that Sam and Scout were in a difficult situation because of Drew, and he thought Sam should follow her gut. For having her back, Sam thanked Dante. They shared a kiss, and Dante saw that Sam always had his back. Brooklyn and Chase celebrated the new year with champagne at the Quartermain estate. They professed their love for one another. After accepting an urgent call on police business, Chase and Brooke Lind decided to meet later at their apartment. Nana made the decision to inform Sunny in the Crimson office that she had been the one to inform the SEC about Drew and Carly's insider trading. Willow appeared as Nina was about to depart. Willow asked Nina to assist her in choosing a New Year's Eve dress. Happily, Nana consented to assist Willow who reappeared in a blue outfit a little while later. Willow was given a necklace by Nina that matched her clothing. Nina's act touched Willow, who commented that she had known she could rely on Nina. Willow noticed the emotion on Nina's face and inquired as to what was wrong. Nana started to lose her voice. Nina claimed that over the years, many significant moments that she and Willow had shared had been lost. Like when I used to brush your hair before school, snap a ton of photos at your prom, and assist you in choosing your wedding gown. The list is endless. You know, when I found out I was pregnant, I was overjoyed. And I had a dream in which I imagined all the things I would do in the event that I became parents to a girl. But we were never able to do those things, Nina remembered gravely. Willa predicted that she and Nina will share many significant occasions in the future. Willow suggested that she and Nina go to the Savoy on New Year's Eve, saying that the night was about fresh starts. Willow said, I think we've kept our husbands waiting long enough. Nina pointed out that Willow could have gone to the Quartermain Mansion to find a dress while they were getting ready to leave. Why go all the way home when I have a mother who works in fashion, said Willow. Willow's remarks moved Nina, and they shared an embrace. Lois informed Sonny at the Savoy that Ned was not the one who had reported Drew and Carly to the SEC for insider trading. What do you know? Ask your son if you don't believe me, Lois added, glancing at Michael, who had returned to the club with Ned and Olivia. Michael, Ned, and Olivia all knew who had provided the tip, 
Lois continued. Ned acknowledged that he hadn't contacted the SEC, and Olivia corroborated his account of events. Observing Michael's silence, Sonny inquired as to whether Michael had withheld the truth from him. According to Michael, he had. Ned recommended that Lois, Olivia, and he give Sonny and Michael some space. Michael told Sonny that he had known the whistleblower's truth since October, the day Sonny with Nina, following Ned's departure with Lois and Olivia. Sonny insisted on knowing why Michael hadn't been honest with him. With a litany of justifications, Michael rambled on, claiming he had known the truth would have wounded Sonny more than anybody else. Michael asserted that he had no intention of harming Sonny. Sonny claimed that he would only have suffered harm if the whistleblower had been a close personal friend. According to Michael, outing the whistleblower would have harmed another person he cared about. Willow, Sonny guessed with speed. Michael was screamed at by Sonny to give an explanation. Who's that? Who is that? Who reported Drew and your mother to the SEC? Sonny yelled. It was Nina, Michael yelled in response. Sonny and Michael were unaware that Nina and Willow had walked into the Savoy just in time to hear their intense argument. Sonny turned to face Nina, who was standing a few steps away, motionless. Lois and Olivia got into a heated argument back at the quarter main house about Lois's choice to inform Sonny that Ned wasn't the source of the leak. While Lois maintained that Sonny had a right to know, Olivia countered that Lois had no authority to speak with Ned or Sonny. Olivia claimed she would never be able to put her trust in Lois again. Lois attempted to reverse Olivia's situation. Let me tell you, the way that I see it is that you know better than anyone what it means to keep secrets from Sonny. In the heat of the moment, Lois said. Olivia took offense at Lois's remarks, and Lois immediately felt regret for her words. And Olivia yelled at Lois. Well, that's amazing. You claimed that Dan doesn't know he's pursuing his father when he grows up, becomes a cop, and goes undercover because I kept the fact that my child was his son a secret from Sonny. After then, Sonny learns the truth but is unaware that the police officer he is shooting is actually his own son. Is that the subject of your conversation? No, no, no. Is this the thing you're shoving in my face, my good friend? Olivia growled. In an attempt to apologize, Lois chased after Olivia, but she had sprinted into the foyer, where Ned and Brooke Lynn were seated. Even after Lois acknowledged that she had overreached, Olivia was still incensed and offended by what Lois had said. My biggest nightmare came true the day Sonny shot Dante. That moment's memory lingers in every peaceful corner of my thoughts. Please tell me, how long have you had that ready to be thrown in my face? Olivia growled. Against Lois's pleas to wait, Olivia stormed out of the mansion. Ned followed Olivia closely. Brooke Lynn inquired as to what Lois had done afterward. I gave a huge mouth opening. And I might have lost my oldest friend at the beginning of the year, Lois remarked, her eyes welling with grief. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.